What's up? What's up? What's up? And welcome to After the Snap. And it's what we've been waiting on, y'all. We've been waiting to get another look at what our uh, X Men animated friends have been doing since 1997, the last time we saw them. So we get some answers uh, as to that today. Um, we're going to be talking in a very spoilerific manner about seasons. I'm sorry. Uh, X Men '97 episodes one and two. So if you haven't watched it and you don't mind being spoiled, hang out with us, chat with us. Um, but I would suggest if you plan to watch it to probably log off of this one and come back and watch the replay because I don't want to ruin any plot points for you. Um, let me see, is there anything happening in the chat just yet? Hey, bunny. Got honey bun in the house. We got honey bun in the house. So, yeah, um, we're going to talk about X Men 97, where we, we're going to pick up where we left off um, with Professor Xavier going off into space with his space boo. And him and space boo, she was going to find a cure for whatever was ailing Professor X. But that left the remaining X Men. Uh, back at the school, the academy, uh, without a leader or without their leader, because they have a leader. And of course, when uh, Professor X is not available, generally the leader would become Cyclops. And that is no different in this animated series. It, picking up even in, in uh, this is would be season, season one of X-Men 97, but it's a continuation. So it'll be season six of the regular X-Men series, but I know I'm just rambling. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we know that this um, power vacuum is going to eventually get filled. And it is filled by, I guess, Professor X's best frenemy, if you want to call him a frenemy. Best frenemy, Magni, uh, we learn in the second or at the end of the first episode is that Professor X left it all, left the whole farm to Magneto uh, prior to his quote unquote death. Now, I have a question about the, the death. You know, we're playing it off to the rest of society as if Professor X is dead. But we know that he went to get space medicine from Space Bay in space. So, <laughs> so he could potentially come back, right? So if Professor X were to come back and show back up on Earth after they have already, uh, they thought he was dead, wouldn't that make them just more afraid of mutants? Because here we got somebody who everybody, we, we went to your funeral, Professor X, and if you show back up, it's almost like you're challenging some people's religious beliefs, but of course I'm giving too much thought to an animated series. Now it be children's stuff, but you know, I got to dig deep into some philosophy behind it. Like that would kind of get scared, scary to uh, some of the religious factions. And then you would have the re some religious factions and the friends of humanity. But anyway, I'm pushing this narrative far, far further than it had to go. What's up, Justin? Good to see you. So, um, anywho, we know Magneto, he, he got the keys to the house. Um, we know Jean was pregnant. I don't know, Jean. Is, is that because I don't want to jump too far ahead of people who don't know the comic book story because I keep my head all in in the um in the uh franchises I kind of have, I've seen the story the original story but I'm not going to tell the original story because I don't want anybody to get spoiled by something that is coming but it's obvious we've already seen this there are at the end of uh episode 2 there are two genes so now you you're wondering which one is which in is going to be the legitimate gene? One of them has to be a fake, right? Or unless both of them are. 
but at least one of them has to be a fake. So which one is the real one? Is it the one that we just watched have, uh, uh, what's his name, Nathan? We, we, we know who that becomes as well. Um, or was it the one who just stumbled in with the nightgown on looking like she, you know, just escaped human trafficking? That's just what she looked like. She looked like she was on the run from somebody. But uh, whatever the case is with um, with Jean, one of them is going to be a fake, right? One of them is going to So what is the motivations of the one who is a fake? And again, I know there's a storybook, a, story, a comic book storyline that covers this. Tread carefully. Don't don't give away too much for people. I I I, I kind of hope I'm still surprised by what happens. <laughs> uh, hey, Wind Grace, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> It's a fake. <laughs> and that's what it is. It was one of those jeans. It's a fake. Oh, I guess I could have been showing you. Look, I, I have some screenshots. I don't have a, a, a whole presentation. I thought we were just going to sit here and talk. What, you guys wanted me to be real, real in-depth and serious? I got a little bit of that coming, of, of things that I think I think about uh, X-Men 97. But for the most part, we're just going to relax and see where we're going to see where this thing is going to take us. But if you guys want some pretty pictures, I'll put them up for you. So yeah, we had this, uh, the X-Men during their recreational time um, we're a year after Professor Xavier's uh, quote unquote passing. So now we are in a, a, I guess, a time where public opinion has shifted about the mutants and uh, people are becoming more accepting, uh, tolerant of the, the, uh, the differences between themselves and the mutants. So things were getting better, it seems, after the quote unquote death of Professor Xavier. Let me see. <laughs> yeah, Rogue is definitely looking like she ready to she's ready to go. But uh what was I gonna say? I lost my train of thought, y'all. Excuse me. But regardless of what I was gonna say, um we have X D. What's up, D? Long time no see. Hey, March. But yeah, we're um, we're okay. We're getting into a point of tolerance, and then once the public learns that Magneto has reached out, in like a, I guess a show of peace in a show of compassion help save a, a group of people who were trapped on a Ferris wheel that was falling. But upon doing that, and, and, oh, and if you're just getting here, I already talked about Magneto getting the keys to the farm. So we're, we're past a little past that now. Um, so Magneto in uh, this, this show of compassion, save these children, save these people on the Ferris wheel. And then when, uh, UN forces came to take him in uh, as a terrorist and, and a, I don't know if it was war criminal I can't call him a war criminal definitely they were calling him a terrorist though so they uh, were bringing him in because of those attacks that were uh, taking place right before Professor Xavier was shot at the end of the original animated series gosh you gotta say a whole lot to preface that but then, okay, so Magneto, show of good faith, allows himself to be colored and is taken in. So I've, I've skipped the juicy parts. We're just trying to get to the bare bones of things and some of the questions that I might have had. Now, um, we're moving forward. We know ha what happens with Magneto as he's standing trial and he... Um, he makes some impassioned 
uh, speeches. And I wish I would have thought to have had a uh, transcript for those speeches, those that uh, as he was testifying before the UN, uh, they they nailed it as far as Magneto's uh, uh, background, and they nailed it as far as the way he would be the uh, to deliver those particular statements. They were very well writ written. Um, in fact, it's all been very consistent with what we have uh, gotten to know about the X Men for all this time. So we have uh, um, the same intro music. We just right out the gates. They're letting you know, you know, it's it's been updated. It's been tweaked. And that's what you can expect from this animation. It's going to be what you remember. It's going to try to stay very true to what you remember. But it, we, we have to make some tweaks for the times. And I think I enjoyed everything that they did to include the way uh, the order in which they brought them on screen in the intro. Um, very telling that it started with Magneto instead of Cyclops. And then it moved down from Magneto to Cyclops to Jean to Storm to Wolverine. And it only makes sense because of the... Uh, as they said later, the Omega level threat that is Storm and possibly potentially Jean Grey. We know Jean Grey can uh, wreak havoc on uh, on society if her psychic abilities were left unchecked. Let me see. Let me see where we at here. So Davina, hey Clarence. Uh, Okay, so, oh, I see when Grace answered. Great. See, it's exactly, exactly, Clarence, obvious. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we got some, some um, romantic tension. And it seems like, okay, we know about the primary love triangle. And I don't even know if we could call it a triangle at this point because it truly appears that uh, whatever tension there was between Wolverine and Jean, she is now pouring that into uh, her marriage with Cyclops, uh, Scott Summers, and their, their, their uh, bundle of joy that they'll be expecting very soon. So... Oh, there's your first or primary love triangle. We always know that that's always there. Wolverine always feels for Jean. Then you have the tension that had already been set up between Gambit and Rogue and how she wishes that she could, you know, uh, be become physical or at least touch another person. She talked about that a bit in, in this episode then we find out she has been touching another person. It just wasn't the person that we suspected it could be, which is probably the only person whose powers are able to counteract hers in some way. I still don't know how, but his powers in some way counteract her powers where she can actually touch him without draining all his powers. And, and he, um, and, you know, just being able to touch somebody is a level of intimacy that she probably hadn't known since uh, she was 13 years old. And now she's able to get this with Magneto. And I'm really shocked that they're going there in the animated series. But, but <laughs> I'm glad that they are tackling it because it is something uh, I never expected to see. Especially if I'm reading their ages right in my mind, uh, it, it it looks like kind of a May December kind of relationship, and I just didn't think I was gonna see that on Disney Plus. But I could be reading that whole situation wrong, and if and there may be they may be younger or closer in age than I'm thinking. So somebody uh, let me know if you guys feel something different about that situation. I'm gonna try to pick up comments. Um, do, 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 do. It's a lot of comments. Oh, Clarence says the reformed Magneto is compelling. 
And I don't know if it's like I'm being led to feel this way, but I still feel like there is some sinister intent with uh, Magneto that even though he is really uh, projecting that he's trying very hard to to say that he would he wants to be uh he think that they can coexist with humans and he is accepting coexistence and he's choking on the flipping words every time he has to say coexist and it makes me feel like is he putting on a show but he couldn't have pulled all these strings that he couldn't have known the things uh were going to happen the way that they did and he especially couldn't know what was going to happen to Storm. I After I watched it, I think the second time, because I've ended up watching it three times. Upon watching it the second time, I was able to kind of keep up in that area because you know it does. This is, this is a series thus far with these first two episodes. They move at a breakneck pace. So it took me the second time watching it to realize that there was not, there was no way that Magneto could have known that uh, that shot was coming because for some reason I was like, did did he set this up? But that would have taken, uh, he would have had to have been a mind reader, and and I guess uh, Charles Xavier he is not, you know. Um, you don't have no dumb questions. Oh, you already asked that question. I I, I saw the answer. Sorry. Um. Lysandra asked, was Jean, was Jean ever pregnant? She is pregnant in this storyline. So this is not this is not the uh, same storyline as the movies or, you know, there are some comic books that uh, have or that this cartoon is adapting from, but it's, it's not closely aligned with what happened in the movies. So she wasn't pregnant in the movies. She is pregnant in the comic books and she does get pregnant now in, in X-Men 97. Uh, let me see. Claire said, uh, one thing that struck me about the show is how extreme these characters are. Rogue is Dolly Parton, Wolverine is super hardcore, but once love. The movies over the past 20 years changed uh, my perception. Yeah. We got to, we've got it kind of Filled out, fleshed out. Have they been made into three dimensional, three dimensional characters? And then we come back and realize that, I guess, in some ways, they had more personality in the animated series. And and I'm not trying to. I, I don't know if I'm uh, if I'm asking the question or if I'm making the suggestion. That's the way I look at it. Is like, wow, you. We saw them in the movies, and this is taking nothing away from the movies because the movies served a definite purpose in uh, in a resurgence of the uh, comic book uh, genre. However, they were just different enough, but they were still the the characters. Even though all the actors did a fantastic job, the way the characters were written were not is animated or and i guess you don't have to be because you can do far far more with the human face than you can with animation but this these um the voice actors are conveying what i would consider a proper rendition of the characters and and i guess i'm saying that because a lot of what i would have seen uh the x-men as far as putting a name or face or uh, uh animation style on a cartoon uh the first one for me would be x-men 90 or the x-men of the 90s the 92 through 97 run so yeah now let me see justice says it was a huge story in the comics uh of the 90s for scott and Jean. Justin also says it seems there's going to be they're going to take a lot from the 90s comics, which is great. Yeah, it's looking like we are going to get uh, a lot of like the people have been saying, I want to see Forge. I want to see uh, Mr. Sinister. I want to see, you know, 
And it's like, we've already gotten little hints that this is where they're going. We, we still don't know where they go from there. You know, what which way they might swing it to make it a bit different and tweak the story. But where the story is already leading us is pretty cool. It's a it's if if we land where uh, many of people want us to land by the end of this, this pretty it's a pretty cool setup for uh, this particular comic book story. Maybe two particular comic book stories that people have been comparing this to. Um, Marge is asking, are there any prominent voice actors we should know? Um, I think the big takeaway for these voice actors for uh, X-Men is that they wanted them to be more, they wanted them to be more or less the, uh, the voices that they remembered from the past. And in a lot of places where that was possible, uh, Marvel uh, accomplished that. They got a lot of the voice talent back. Uh, some people, of course, have passed away in, in the interim between these between 1997 and now. And uh, and then some people have just parted their parted their ways with the character, with you know, with the uh, production. So we got some of them back. So I don't know if there are any like big names that we're doing. I um they were doing the characters who have lost their original voice actors. So, um, but I don't, I didn't recognize any. I said all of that to say, I didn't recognize any. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Magneto and Rogue were also uh, hooking up in the nineties runs of the X-Men. It just seems like such an uncomfortable kind of situation in the house with even though nobody knows that rogue is canoodling with magneto except for now gambit but that's the wrong person to know <laughs> he he's not the one that you want to know um speaking about gambit how many people have had a problem? You know, it's the toxic group. It's the toxic folks, but I got to talk about them because they, they're they people who are voicing it. They had an issue with what Rebby LeBeau has on in this picture. And I'm like, but well, ain't this supposed to be the 90s? Isn't this what they were wearing? And I should know I was there. I was like literally an adult pretty much in the 90s. I was wondering to myself, like, gosh, why do I remember myself being so young watching X-Men, the original animated series, when I was truly like 19 or 20 years old? And, and uh, very soon after that, about to be a mama. <laughs> so it, I, I seemed or I felt so much younger. But, you know, that's just the way we remember and romanticize things in our mind. But... Um, yeah, the, the, the rogue and... And uh, and Remy thing and this problem that people are having with the way Remy LeBeau is dressed, I'm like, just please stop. This is the '90s. I know, I know. It it uh, Justin says if they go the way of Xavier story arc or something like that, this will be epic. I uh, I did have questions about it, but I'm like, I just we'll see, we'll see. So Dolly Parton is not voicing Rogue. No, <laughs> but she, there you go. You got your answer. <laughs> Canoodle is the canonical term. <laughs> oh, gosh. Clarence, you said that's the 80s look. I, I Look, and, and I could be wrong. I pulled up uh, something on, on Twitter, and they had a picture. It was one of those memes. And it had a picture of several people that are uh, TV on TV and in, in media. Um, they had several pictures of people, and and they were men with the little cut off shirts. Uh, even one of them was with the Fresh Prince. And I'm like, I don't remember him wearing this cut off shirt, but if it wouldn't have stood out to me in that era because it it, it, it didn't stand up like a sore thumb 
like it will to some of these people who are younger, but they have to realize that this really was the fashion, at least in some circles, then. Exactly. Uh, I like the meme going around with all the manly men wearing this, Johnny Depp, et cetera. <laughs> right. That was an 80s, a 90s look. He has also 80s. <laughs> uh, Pink was a little more uh, worn by uh, younger guys in the late 80s, early 90s. But he's also older here. So maybe that's an old shirt and he's home, not out and about. Yeah, I'm going to think about that. Might be <laughs> That might be the way he's uh, dressing in, in the house. Lasaja says she's loving Storm's hair. And you know what? That's been another point of contention we, uh, with people. But then once they realize uh, that it was it, it's a comic book, it's a, a 2022 or 2024, gosh, take on a comic book accurate Storm hairstyle. Storm did have a, a, a run where she had the mohawk. You know, in the beginning, she had the uh, the longer hair, and then she got a mohawk, and there was a, a, a certain storyline that I'm not trying to dive too deep into because um, I don't want it to be a spoiler. If, if we're right, if we're right, I don't want to spoil-ish for anybody else. But I do want to say this. Somebody said that the character that they wanted to see come back was Forge. And I will say that looks like it could potentially happen. So you were on the money when you said Forge. Um, Atlanta Thrasher said he should be wearing more grunge stuff or a Tommy Hill figure. He, well, I don't know. He's from like the, from the, where's he from? New Orleans, right? I don't know. I, well, I, I can't think of what they might have been wearing in New Orleans in that era, uh, given his, you know, style. He looks like he's in the band Poison. Fresh Prince was a, a million years ago. Not Skid Row. I don't know what I'm right about, but I'll I'll take it. <laughs> Uh, Atlanta Thrasher graduated high school in 98. I graduated in 91. Atlanta Thrasher, that was, it was you that wanted Forge. <laughs> well, it's looking like it's going that way. When Grace says, I like her with the Mohawk. Only thing I would have liked uh, the show to have done is have her start with the long hair and transition to the Mohawk after a certain thing happens in episode two. Right. And and we talked about episode two just a little. I don't mind giving the spoilers for stuff that has happened, but some of us and, and a lot of us may feel like we can see where, where certain storylines are going. And uh, there are some people who don't know those comic book storylines and I don't want to be the person to tell them because I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of those things, but there are channels who do. So if you want to get spoiled, at least get spoiled by somebody who knows all the facts because I do not in this situation. <laughs> Morph giving us Easter eggs was kind of awesome. It was that do you think it was a little over the top for him to, to do the Professor X thing, though? No. I'm like, why would you turn into Professor X? Everybody walking around sad. I know it's been a year. You're going to turn into this man. Now, you know it's already going to get crazy when he come back from whatever planet he's on and come back and his toes touch down on Earth and people are going to think that he resurrected when he wasn't ever. Anyway, that's a whole different thing. Morph uh, played up. I guess he, he he caught us up on a lot of things. Oh, and Morph, when he was changing during the fights, 
So I know he did the the he switched to uh Professor X and he switched to Gene and he's playing with uh with Wolverine and Sabretooth and all of that. But in the fights, not only was he that person in body that he would like morph into, he also had their fighting style. And I was like, that's dope. Wait a minute, speaking of dope, because I haven't said this today. I like the fact that they are allowing Cyclops to have fun, to not be stuffy, to be loose in his uh, position or in his demeanor as he's becoming the leader of these X-Men. He seemed to have a joy in in saving lives he, he was having fun he was having fun he was fun he um the the way that they uh showed him manifesting or not manifesting but using his powers in ways than just cutting people or boring a hole through people by looking at them he um he used his powers differently and i thought that made him an, a more interesting character in this animation Another person, because I know I said that was the, one of the things that Cyclops pretty much stole the show. If we were giving a Best Actor and Best Actress uh, award for X-Men 97 episodes 1 and 2, Best Actor would be going to uh, uh, Cyclops and the Best Actress would be going to Storm because they finally showed how menacing her powers can be. It's not just pouring a little bit of rain on you. It's not just that type of uh, I'm gonna strike you with a little lightning. She made glass out of sand. <laughs> Look, this is what I am talking about when we talk about Ro. I mean, a uh, storm. Storm is not a punk. She, as as Magneto even said. Storm, you are the closest thing we got to a goddess around here. That she is literally that big of a threat. And it seems like they finally got it right this time just to take it away. The Atlanta Thrasher says, yeah, they're technically in New York. I don't know if uh, Cyclops would would let fly the black let him fly the blackbird to go pick up some clothes. He's a stick in the mud. <laughs> he seems to be a lot more fun in this in this uh, in this series. Justin said Grunge Rock also had that look, and uh, Chris Cornell had that look for a bit too. But there you have it. When Grace says, at least the Professor X thing gives us a plausible reason to have him in the voice cast without spoiling any return later, right? Because I didn't realize that we were going to get him morphing that one time. And just like you said, now we understand why he was given the billing in the voice cast. Clara says, insensitive certainty, or certainly, I didn't know he was such a jokester. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, you know. <laughs> Put it like that. I, I expected a whole lot of jokes. I did not expect him to turn into Professor X standing up in the kitchen. You know. <laughs> oh, because, you know. Standing up is already one thing for Professor X. So that would already mess me up if I walked in the kitchen and saw Professor X standing up. But then I'd be like, you ain't even supposed to be here. Why would you do? Why would you? <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, yeah, Justin, I think I, I can feel what you're saying here. Justin said uh, he thinks Cyclops always reminds him of a more edgy Captain America. Marge wants to be Storm, man. I would like to, too. I can't see. <laughs> I think he said Boy Scout. Okay. Since Corm Storm is such a cool character. Yeah, everybody is agreeing that they either want to 
be Storm or hang out with Storm? I too would like to be Storm. <laughs> they would have to have two Storms so me and you can share. And there will still be one. Look at their math, see? Now we we were talking about uh, when Grace's bought Cisco's book. They're talking about the autobiography of Ben Cisco. And look, I need that book myself. Um, I'm gonna have to. Yep, I'm gonna have to figure it out a way. I want that book. But they are doing um, on Clarence's channel discussing Trek. They are doing a, uh, a book club, and that is the book that they have started with. And there has been such a, a strong reaction to uh, that book, how they are telling the story, where they're picking the story up with, what threads they have uh, picked up from the last time we saw Benjamin Sisko. So this is me highly recommending if you if you have the book or if you're going to read the book, follow along with uh, Clarence and his team over on Discussing Trek. I'll, I'm usually there myself. <laughs> oh, and also, they there are um, there's a Discord, so they were having a conversation about the book over in the Discord at one point, but then they picked the conversation up back here as they're talking to one another in uh, this chat, and you can be proud of the the, the chats. This is a link with my link tree. It's a link in the description. So you can go ahead on and do that and keep up with us, you know, join the discord, keep up with what we're doing during the week. Uh, and, and also um, what else is in there? All your ways to find me on the socials. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to read to see. So let me see what else. What else is there to talk about? We talked about how super powered Rogue is, how smart Scott is with the way that he is using his power in different ways. We talked about uh, Magneto and Rogue and Gambit and their love triangle. Oh, I guess what we didn't talk about is. Um, the baby. Yay, we, we had a baby and we had funny moments. Uh, not too many. They didn't put, they didn't cram too many funny moments into one little spot. But that actually had some comedic moments that kind of uh, lessened the gravity. Even though we we're going into another grave situation, it lessened the gravity of the episode because Magneto was giving us some heavy Heavy dialogue, heavy allegories, heavy uh, visualizations of the way things had gone for him, you know, and what what formed his opinions of uh, mankind when they were found to have these mutant genes. So, um, so yeah. I don't forgot where I was going, but anywho. <laughs> oh gosh, let's see where what other pictures I got up here. Yeah, that was the insensitive morph. That, that was just wrong, morph. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, this is morph, but he turned into saber tooth so he could uh, help help Logan to not feel all sad. Because Jean and uh, this pregnant Jean was talking about leaving uh, the X Mansion, leaving the team. So I don't know where, how, or when we'll get to the bottom of which Jean is which. You know, which one is the one that has uh, been with us, and which one is the replacement the imposter I, I feel like 
I feel like there may even be another imposter. I'm not 100% sure. So don't get me to throwing out uh, names. But I mean, an imposter in, in their actions and not in who they are. You know what I mean? Okay, uh, let's see where else we going with this. Um, Executioner had that Sentinel tech, which uh, is the only thing that brought Storm down. She jumped in front of that, that bullet for, for Magneto. And that's why I, when I was talking about it at the top, it's like I was saying... Uh, I didn't know if Magneto, in the beginning, the first time I watched it, I wasn't sure if Magneto had something to do with Storm uh, being shot and losing her powers because she was this Omega level threat. But then after I looked at it the second time and, you know, again, this show moves really, really fast. <laughs> So when I watched it the second time, that's when it hit me that, no, he had absolutely nothing to do. But he didn't know she was going to jump in front of him. So he couldn't have had anything to do with it because I'm still waiting for the other shoe to drop with Magneto. I feel like um, this can't last for too much longer of him being, uh, being tolerant, being peaceful being a, a, a cooperative, I, I haven't seen him I, and I can't see him doing it for too much longer in this season, especially given the fact that in this, everything is happening so very quickly in, uh, in these first couple of episodes here. It's like we've covered the same amount of ground in these four episodes that it would have taken eight to cover. And I'm saying eight is because we're getting a little bit um, more. The story is being filled out a little bit. We're, it's, it's like we are getting cliff notes of, of episodes and packaged together as an episode because that's how fast it's happening. So I, I think this is a, a series that could benefit from probably having another maybe at least five. What it looks like at least five more episodes to slow things down just a little. But it, it wasn't so fast that they didn't get all this exposition out because they were trying to basically the uninitiated who have said, you know what, now it's the time I'm going to dive into X-Men, um, new fans, younger, uh, the younger generation. There's a lot of people who never heard of the original X-Men, uh, the animated series, who are going to be on board and uh, to watch this series. And they are they don't have the uh, the benefit of a 26 episode season to catch up on what happened before. We got to give it to them in little TikTok bites, and the younger audience is going to get it. But for me, this shit was moving like a breakneck speed, and I was like, okay, okay, I see, I know things are happening, I know this is happening over here. What's going on over there? It was some things that I didn't see the first time that I had to watch it again to see simply because that motherfucker moving fast. <laughs> Excuse my French, Stu. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, well. Wait a minute. Claire said he loved how it looks like humankind are accepting the mutants. Yeah, it appears that way. <laughs> uh, when Grace said, do not make me let you down. And the thing about this is that could be taken as a, th a true threat because of the, the position that he had them in. It's pretty much like if I let you down from right here, Trouble, there's trouble in paradise. So I, I think Magneto is still on some selfish stuff. So 
is he going to use Professor X's philosophy to further, you know, to, to get into rooms that he would not have been able to get into before? I definitely think he would do that. What he going to do when he get in there is anybody's guess, because I cannot be forced to believe that uh, that he's going to that he's changed his his ways. You know, he don't he can't stand being in around these people. And you could tell every time he said he wants to coexist with them, he he almost choked on the word. So he doesn't even want that's definitely not what he wants, but he knows that's what he has to say. I want to know what his end game is because I refuse. And at the end of the season, I hope I'm wrong. I hope somebody remembers that I said this and are like, Tasha, see, you were wrong. You was reading a book by its cover. <laughs> oh, the entire not joke was straight from the 90s. Exactly. Exactly. And I just I just loved the use of when you think about the not joke, okay? I loved the use of Cyclops powers just they gave him so much more control um and then just so much more planning of these the strategy behind using those blasts they're not just all oh, go 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 he he can have a plan for how things are going to go and use it as concussion use it to knock somebody out this that he he had all of those options and we saw him really get down with some good old hand-to-hand -hand fighting. I enjoyed the depiction of uh, Cyclops because it didn't relegate him to just being the straight man for Wolverine, you know? And of course, we still love the back and forth that they have together. But Wolverine would come up out on top very often. And Scott showed in this first two episodes that he can hold his own in a verbal spar with uh with Wolverine. He he's he's like I am I'm just as witty, I'm just as quick. So I liked it. Was Genosha Island mentioned in the uh old cartoon? It wait a minute, let me see. Yeah, that was that was the story. <laughs> And um, what else? What else? Oh, I guess I could go to another picture. It'll jog my memory. Man, like I said, I already have sung my praises to the goddess Storm. Um, I liked the the conversation, the pep talk that she had with uh, not Jean or Jean. I don't know. It could be not Jean. I don't know if that's the real Jean. Or if that's the if if that's a lookalike, a fake. Um, but anyway, Storm just, yeah, she's everything, just everything. And um, we're getting a, a very, very um sisterly turn with Storm and Jean. And then on the other hand, we see the wrath and fury of Storm. And now we are, we know that she's in a very vulnerable position. You know, she um, is, of course, she's not used to not having her powers. So the world feels different around her. Um, her friends feel like they, they are friends with the person she was before, not with who she's become now. So she's going to ostracize herself from uh, her friendships and family and go out on her own. Now, would I still want to meet Storm, Aurora Monroe? Would I want to meet her in a dark alley? No, I would not. <laughs> I think Aurora Mon Monroe, without being Storm, without having those powers, would probably still kick most people's ass. So in my opinion, she's still a rock star. She's still, you know, this, this super hero type person, but she doesn't feel that way. 
So I, I guess we're about to head on a journey with her as she discovers life without her powers. But then we do need to keep up. With, remember now, forge. We're we're going to forge ahead, and and I'm not going to say anything else about that. <laughs> Mm-mm-mm. Oh yeah, what grace. You said uh storm, give him the forecast. Oh my gosh. Cyclops became a leader, and Cyclops and Storm to me were the standouts in this episode. Well, my throat's a little sore. Atlanta Thrasher says, I'm hoping she's at least doing some soul searching instead of just feeling depressed. Yeah, and I hope, you know, with one thing, I guess we can see it, what's about to happen in the titles of the, uh, of two of the, two of the three upcoming episodes have a title that kind of lends itself to being storm-centric. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully we're going to pay a bit more of a, a attention to that story instead of that one doesn't have to be as breakneck as the other part because it appears that we're going to get a lot of action or uh, they threw a lot in the first couple of episodes to hook us and then they're going to slow everything down a bit. Um, when Grace says, it's too much to introduce in this show. But if she took up Thor's hammer, like in the comics, that would be epic. I was listening to somebody talking about that run um, where she, uh, when, where Loki, uh, basically Loki helped her get powers, but he did it to spite Thor. So Storm was wielding the power and all of this. And then she realized that she was being used as a pawn by Loki and she gave it up. So that was a comic book run. And that was one of those ones that, uh, that uh, happened after, after this particular uh, section of or sequence of events in her life that we are starting to pick up on in X-Men 97. Yeah. I knew what you meant. <laughs> um so yeah i'm just I, I was so impressed with how they uh manifested showed her powers manifest and also again um cyclops the two standouts to me everybody else uh, pretty much performed as expected yeah everybody else was their their performance was Nope, I'm lying. When all of them work together to take down the master mode, they um all you know knew each other's powers and how to enhance those powers when you needed to. And it happened again so quickly, but so many things had to happen right for Wol for Wolverine to get from um off of off of Gambit's back to be able to slice off the head of the master mode. I know it sounds crazy, but so many things had to happen <laughs> for that to have made sense. And it made perfect sense after, even after I watched it a couple of times, like what the hell did I see happen in this little sequence? And then you look again and be like, yeah, that's what I thought I saw. <laughs> they were, they wowed it out uh, as far as powering up each other's uh, powers, yeah. Anyway. But yeah, this new look Magneto, you know, it's been a year. His homeboy has been uh, gone. It's a constant companion. And then, you know, he, he's taking on this different look. I guess he's in hiding. So that's another thing you had to think about.
Oh, yeah. Wingray says he also uh, liked the little callbacks, like the roof of the, the Jeep getting peeled off. Right. And that's another um, all crazy sequence of events with Wolverine taking Gene to the hospital. Because I'm like, y'all ain't got no, y'all don't have a facility for something like that down there in that X, X mansion. Because you know, y'all know good and well, when you go to these civilian hospitals, that you go get looked at funny if that baby come out doing some some mutiny. You know what I'm talking about. Not mutiny, mutinty. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess uh, sexy, sexy Magneto and 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 Rogue have obviously been uh, intimate. Not you know, not we're not talking in you know the crazy. I'm looking at these characters like they are real people things, but you know they had been in intimate contact as far as touching. They've had to have had it before for them, number one, for them to know that he could do that. But then number two, for her to uh, to know to go in there and, you know, you're not going to just walk in his room like that unless there is a level of intimacy between you and him. So that that's something that's been going on for a minute. We just, you know, off screen. <clears throat> Dr. Rogue, I guess they figured that she could do that. Like, girl, we'll just go and let you touch the doctor and you can deliver the baby. But then Rogue was, you know, off being a superhero and stuff. <laughs> oh. So what do we think, y'all? What do we think about, about Jean? Now, keep in mind, Many people know the, the the way it went down in the comic books. Uh, many people don't know how it went down in the comic books. But we know that the animated series is it's, its own thing. It's, it may take inspiration from the comics. It doesn't have to faithfully follow the comic line. You know, they've done uh, probably the best out of any of the uh X-Men properties that we've seen, this the animated series has done the best of being faithful, but they don't have to remain so faithful to it that they're beat for beat, right? Where we think this thing going? Do we think that the rogue that's pregnant, I mean, not rogue, why do I keep, everybody that's not rogue, Tasha, the gene that we uh, see that was pregnant that had the baby, she's she could be the real gene or the other chick that that knocked on the door can be the real gene we know where things may have gone with it in the comic books but personally and i know this is very little to go on because we've only seen uh, many of us have only seen two episodes some of them some people have seen far more um we saw we saw two episodes. All of us saw two episodes at the same time as you. <laughs> so where do we think this is going? Based on the title of the next episode, it definitely seems related to the comic plan. And look, I'm going to um pull up my my handy dandy episode um the titles cuz i can't remember which was was that next episode that's the life death and um uh, momento and i think i accidentally read something that was like motendo not momento lord have mercy that was uh saying why the <laughs> why it's called Motendo? And once I heard it, I was like, "Oh, I should have known." And look, I'm not being funny. I like Mojo episodes, 
But that's not where my mind, for some reason, my mind did not initially go to that's mojo. Oh gosh. So we're gonna get some foolishness and we're gonna get and it appears as uh when Grace has stated, it appears that we're gonna get some heavy-ish, and we're going to get something light with the Mo Motendo episode. When Grace says, the part that has me wondering is when she said, I need to see the X-Men, as if she isn't personally familiar with them. Yes, yeah, so that's what made me feel kind of like the person outside the door is the person that's not supposed to be there, even though, yeah, I, I feel the exact same way you do. She wasn't expecting the entire team to be standing at the door. <laughs> Like you, you literally seeing damn near all the X Men, lady. What do you mean you need to see them? Man, another just high point of the episode. I know it's been talked about to death, but that is just such a dope image, and uh, not only just a dope image, it is definitely a, a, a great use to how these people or how this team together uh, enhance one another. And they know well, one another well enough to have experimented a million times and found ways that their powers uh, together equal a power up, you know? Yeah. I'm trying to think. So like I said, it was a a, a few things, you know, I, I don't mind the breakneck speed because I've got a lot of time. And, you know, when I'm not watching the grandchildren, I'm watching something. Uh, you can best believe I'm watching or listening to something. And the, the, the speed of this is not killing me because I can watch it over and over again. Some people don't have that amount of time. And man, when I tell you shit moving fast, it's moving fast. Okay, so there's that. Um, and the first couple of episodes, we kind of got the Cliff's notes of each character and what they can do. And we got that through uh, expository dialogue. And so... In the meantime, when there wasn't anything happening, the people were over explaining um, a character or that character's skill set. And uh, again, it's to uh, help people along. So we know that this is not just because they don't have anything better to do with this dialogue. It's because they do have to make an introduction to other people who are not familiar with this uh, with this group of people. So then you have that, and and I'm okay with that. So I, my my big thing is I don't want to see that level of exposition, even though they got a little expositiony in the old one too. So I, it might just be me uh, uh, fondly remembering not having all of this this extra dialogue explaining what we were going to do. But it's probably always been there, and it just didn't bother me then. And now that I'm an old codger, it's bothering me now. <laughs> okay, when Grace said, uh, "Let's," yeah, 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 he said, "Let's expand." Do you think uh, if do you think if this proves successful? They should or could bring back the entire old Marvel animated universe of Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, etc. Oh. I would say it, it only makes sense that it would be something that they would think about. But then would they think about it and give it uh, the same amount of care that they've seemed to have given, at least, at least going by these first couple episodes, they seem to have given X-Men 97 an awful lot of care. 
And do you think that they, once they see a cash cow, they're going to give the same amount of care, the same level of care to the projects that come under it? And that answer, you know, could be yes. I don't know. I don't, I don't have enough knowledge of, of uh, how they work at Disney like that to know that oh, if we brought out uh, Spider-Man and Fantastic Four and, you know, had these, this Marvel animated universe, they um, the uh, have the Marvel animated universe, are we going to give it the story time to breathe and, and be and uh, to garner the audience? You know, they, they want everything now, now, now as far as profits and and the such. I don't know how they would want to, I don't know if they'd want to throw any money behind it. And you would think, and I don't know what numbers look like as far as the DC animated universe, but look, we could talk all the crap we want about uh, the last few uh, DC EU movies. We can talk a lot of crap, you know, and, and say what we want, that DC animate, Animated Universe hits almost every time. And I don't think that there has been an unwatchable DC Animated Universe uh, uh, cartoon or whatever for me, as far as, as far as my opinion goes. I don't think I've seen one that I didn't like or that there, there was uh, something redeeming about it that took it from being... Uh, average to slightly above. I and truly enjoy DC Animated Universe, and that's because they put a lot of care behind uh, the characters and the stories. And by the same token, in the Marvel Animated Universe, if you can call it that, uh, before there it was inconsistency. But of course, it's being produced by all over all over the place. I get it. I got it. That's good. But it still doesn't change the fact that the Marvel brand is attached to it and it looks inconsistent. Your brand looks inconsistent if uh, the stories in one group is, for instance, and, and I'm saying this and I know I'm rambling, Madam Webb. There's a lot of talk about how great that movie is. And I think that everybody should go to the movie. No, I'm just playing. Um, <clears throat> Madam Webb, the fact that it is Marvel's, Marvel's uh, Madam Webb, and Marvel is attached to that movie, there are so many people who feel like that movie is part of the Disney stuff. They don't know the difference, and if, because they're not uh, unhealthily obsessed with stuff like that, little details like that, then there are folks like us. <laughs> we are, but um, even some of the young ladies who worked the movie had no clue that there were two different entities that Marvel Studios and uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and, and Sony's Marvel were, they didn't even know that this is a thing, that some shit like that could happen. This is how they got the cast from Adam Webb. They thought they were going to be in the MCU. And then they found out. Then they found out. So <clears throat> I said all that to say this. Marvel MCU has done a fantastic job, but their brand is getting watered down by the Sony movies that are horrible. So now, and when uh, uninitiated girlfriend and un and, and super initiated, you will see a Marvel movie, uh, and he takes her to this one. He knows in his mind that this is not the MCU. This is a Sony Marvel movie. To her, all Marvel movies are going to be based on what she saw in this Marvel movie. And that's kind of how, at, how, to me, Marvel animation went for a long time. If I'm introduced with this series, then you might have me hooked for life. But if I come in on that series from a, a different studio, well, then... 
I mean, <laughs> you've lost me forever. Yeah. When Grace is talking about the uh, animation, he said, I think Spider-Man would make sense since it ended on a cliffhanger for all intents and purposes. And I don't even remember that. <laughs> Justin says, maybe, but it may not be done well and it may be overdone. People just get fed up with it and think it's a cash grab uh, with so-so storytelling. Yeah, that could be a problem. And when Gray says, not even the Sony and Marvel difference. Some normal people don't even get that Batman and the Avengers aren't the same thing. You are so right. When they hear a superhero, they automatically think that there, there's only one group of superheroes and they all kick it together. The Batman, the Avengers, Superman, uh, Omni-Man, <laughs> Homelander. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Oh. Spider-Man ended with Mary Jane being lost to the multiverse and Madam Webb taking him to look for her. You know... I can see, I can see them trying to do it. Now, what are, what are they doing? You you want the original uh storyline. Now they got they've got that one Spider-Man coming out. The the early years of freshman or year or some shit. I forgot the name of it. You know what I'm talking about, Win Grace. It's the uh a new animated series that's going to be coming on Disney Plus. It's Spider-Man. And and is it the freshman year? Anyway, I can't remember. Yeah. Wigray said he forgot about it too. They mentioned it like four years ago. I'm sorry. I don't know what the heck happened. I <laughs> I hit a button that I shouldn't have hit on this mouse, I'm guessing. I don't even remember what I was saying. Yeah, I remember them mentioning that uh, some years ago about the Spider-Man animated series, and then we didn't see anything. But then I thought I was hearing about it again. Uh See you later, March. I'm trying to see if if I can find. It looks like they renamed it to Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, and it's coming in November. There you have it. Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. So, yeah, they actually, if they really wanted to, they could make something happen. Do you know? They could make something happen to uh, lead a different version of Spider-Man into the multiverse because the multiverse is still going on. We can, we got an opportunity to uh, clip another vine, so to speak, by closing out that storyline. Mm -hmm. Just as said, if they do go in uh, with all the Marvel animation shows, we'll get DC back making stuff again. We'll get a new Batman Beyond the movie. 
you know, they, they've got so many options in D.C. that hopefully, because we know we got this fresh start with, with, with James Gunn, hopefully they, um, they take advantage of that catalog that they have that hasn't been touched in decades. So yes, we do want to see uh, the evolution of uh, Batman, evolution of of the, the characters that we had come to know, but we also got some characters that we have never met, and let's you know sprinkle them in. Sprinkle, just give me a little, little bit over here, a little bit over there. Sprinkle that in. When Gray said they they leaked concept art for a Batman Beyond movie a month or so ago. It looked amazing. And this is supposed to be a live action. Uh, uh, uh. Sorry. I had the children this morning and they, they were for some reason not tired at all. They stayed up too long and I didn't get a nap today. I know I really sound like an old lady, but I don't care about it. I don't like no old lady. <laughs> oh, animated by the Spider-Verse people. That would be dope too. Especially, you know, when we say that by the same little group that gave us this, I trust them with, uh, with animation. And I trust them to to uh, handle the story with the same care as the original creator because they stayed so faithful in in uh, many of the styles that they did throughout both movies, the Spider-Verse 1 and Spider-Verse 2. So I, I would I would not mind them getting their, hand, their hands on the characters in the uh, DC animated universe and then bring not only some of our old favorites to life, you know, but to bring some of the lesser known ones. And, you know, you don't have to do it fast. You don't have to put them in an, uh, in a quote unquote canon situation, but um, start bringing them in. You don't want to have too many at once, but you, you do want to plant seeds that are coming and, and, that's to me exciting because if I don't remember what a power set is, or if I'm never, if I never was uh, familiar with the character, it kind of makes me more interested because I have no preconceptions about what I'm walking into. Furthermore, I can't get ahead of the uh, of the story the way I do. I don't, you know, I like I, I live too two steps ahead of the story. I'm always thinking to the next part when I can't do that about a character that uh, I don't have that much knowledge about unless I just insanely send it to computer for hours and hours on end, typing in information and ingesting all the information that I can about these characters, which I really shouldn't do before I go to a movie. Well, guess who does it? Yeah, me. <laughs> Just to say, that's what he saw. It was like the Spider-Man movie that came out. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, Justice League Unlimited made so many low-end people cool. Um, you said that movie would be epic. So the Batman Beyond movie, I think that's the one you're talking about. Now, Just Justice League Unlimited. Oh, of course, I wanted both of those to get more seasons telling the stories that they were telling in, in their uh, their particular runs. That's the League Unlimited got to be a little bit too many people to me. And I, I guess I can understand how intimidating it would be, even though I know most of the characters, it's still too many to give up the proper attention unless they were going to be greenlit with so many other seasons, which is what I wish would have happened because then we would have gotten a, a slow roll for some of these lesser known characters and, uh, and got to hang out with them a little bit longer and, you know, 
and get to know their their skill set. What even brought them to the Justice League? Just having powers is not enough because you got villains with powers. So what about their personality? And we would not get to know many of those characters in Justice League Unlimited because we just didn't have time. Wish we would have gotten more. <laughs> And, and um, again, Dwayne McDuffie was what made that uh, so good. He was brilliant. And that's why it, I, I said, yeah, we I wanted to see more, but would it even be the same now? You know, um, Dwayne McDuffie uh, sadly passed away a few years back. Um, it wouldn't be the same if we brought those characters in. And I know that uh, sometimes we let the nostalgia get in the way of uh, getting a good story. But yeah, it just would feel a little off. And yeah, I don't think I'd be a, a huge fan of them coming back with another uh, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited in that style, uh, trying to pick up those stories. Even though it was a lot of meat left on the bones there. There was a lot of meat left on the bones. We could have gotten uh, many other stories of, about um, the, well, the expansion of the group. And then could have just took us right smack dab into Young Justice, even though you got know, we got different styles, we know. But Young Justice, to me, first two seasons, I think I watched them all, if I remember correctly. But the early seasons, of course, are my favorite, even though story is still cohesive. They're doing things uh, in the proper uh, in the proper order of you, what you would expect to happen it would naturally progress. But uh, the, those early seasons of Young Justice just did it for me. And again, I was old as dirt watching Young Justice because I got a son. So I, he was my excuse to do a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, Wayne Gray says as much as I love that universe I don't think it would work especially uh, with Kevin Conroy gone as the effort as the anchor sorry uh, Wayne Gray says Young Justice did a pretty good job of using DC characters in a completely different angle I, and I, I did I liked uh, Young Justice as well um, and would I like, you know, I was all for it when, uh, they, they were fight when everybody was fighting to get the next season of young justice. Then when we finally got it, they had that, um, DC streaming service. Was it called DC universe? I forgot what it was called, but I subscribed to that DC universe because I wanted to let them know that I was so serious. I'm so here for, uh, for Young Justice this next season. And then he also brought out uh, Doom Patrol and what was the other one? Help me. Titans. Titans and D and Doom Patrol. That's what it was. So they had brought those out too. That kept me with, with DC. I thought I was saving DC and the DC Animated Universe all by myself by staying faithfully subscribed to DC Universe when it really wasn't like a whole lot going on over there after <laughs> after the shows that I wanted to watch were gone. It's like it ain't a lot happening over here. But I stayed faithfully. And the reason why is because I wanted them to know for sure I was dead serious. You guys are going to continue to get my five or six dollars a month, whatever, however much it was. I don't remember until uh, the next time Ju Young Justice. So yes, I personally saved Young Justice and uh, brought it back. So you're welcome. Um, what else was I doing here? Yeah, yeah, a lot of, it was a lot of hateness and, but well, and you know, I was, uh, 
there's a, an, an author named uh, uh, Malcolm Malcolm Gladwell, and I'm, you know some people have heard him. I know, um, but he said something in an interview, and I was watching it. Uh, it's an old interview, but he said something, and it hit me how profound it was because he was talking about um, diversity and. No, nope, uh, listen to me now. I agree with the sentiment. Don't go pull up other stuff that this man has said and then come to me and tell me that I'm supporting this or that. Nope, I'm supporting one thing. The only thing that I really know about Malcolm Gladwell, besides the fact that he is a pretty prolific author, is that he said this. <laughs> That's it. That's all I know about him is that he said this and that he is a pretty prolific author. So if he comes out and he's done some horrible shit, and I don't, don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Okay, so I said all of that to say Malcolm Gladwell was in a room and they were uh, discussing, so he's in a room with some of the uh, employees of the podcast company, Pushkin. I believe Pushkin Media that he owns along with a friend. He is the co-founder of it. And one of those employees asked him something about uh, diversity. And he talked about how diverse a, uh, you know, how this divisive uh, a word diversity can has become. Now he's not saying agree or disagree. And then he asked the question, how many Republicans are there in this room? And look around and nobody had their hand up. And he said, and that is the problem with diversity, you know, with the, 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 the decisiveness or indecisiveness about diversity. So you have a room full of people, professionals, they're all working together in this podcast company, and you don't have one voice that's a Republican. So, and this is not, again, I'm not agreeing, I'm agreeing with the sentiment here, not just, not what he's talking about, the, the, the context around it. It feels like you gotta, you you have to have something that represents these, this one group of uh of people that nobody represent. You get what I'm saying? And I don't know where I was going with that one, Grace. I know I was talking to you. Oh yeah, you said uh, ju Young Justice got hate for racist reasons. If the only thing that we get out of that is that we learn who is a racist around us, like who not to F with. <laughs> if the only thing we learn is that's the only lesson that we take from these things, you know, take those lessons. Somebody tells me who they are. It's my. It's it's up to me to believe them, and and I try to. Um, I, I prefer loud racists. I don't want a, 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 a. I don't want a racist around me who is quiet and sneaky. I want one that is loud and arrogant and ignorant because then I can recognize that dude. You know. But the, the it's the sneaky ones that that I don't particularly like. So I like the ones that make a whole bunch of noise. I can block you and move on with my life. Yeah, but you can't. I I get the fact that you can't do that when you're trying to, uh, when you're trying to produce a, a, a TV show. You know, Justin said, yeah, it wouldn't be the same, but DC Animated had a lot of great writers, though, so they could do it. But without Kevin, it would be hard. But Roger Smith is a good Batman. I don't remember. Roger Smith is, uh, started in what movie? I know this last thing they had, um, Kevin Conroy, that was the last time him and Mark Hamill voiced uh, the, the nem arch nemesis together. Uh, gosh, you know, it is so hurtful that so many of them went so young, you know, and, and 
Yeah, we got a lot of time with him as Batman. No, we got a lot of time with him. Um, so next week, um, the episode, oh gosh, I forgot. Oh, the, the next episode is uh, the Motendo, or is it the Motendo Life Death, right? And that's the one with Mojo getting uh, somebody stuck in a, no, a Nintendo type game. <laughs> and then the other half is going to be, as we are assuming, is going to be uh, following Storm a little bit more. See what's going on with her. Oh, that's so sad. Said that he died within uh, months of the Green Power Ranger. That was a horrible year for you. I can imagine because you were pretty, you had to be pretty young when all that happened. Oh, and Justice says, I feel your pain. Um, and he's also explaining who uh, Roger Smith is. He said he did Batman Ninja, Arkham Origins, and many other titles of Batman. Man. Well, I guess. Uh, we talked about the Nintendo thing. We talked about, uh, so that's next week. It's a little two-part kind of snippet or whatever. And uh, we only get one episode. We're not getting two. Uh, what else? Y'all saw that the Acolyte is coming on uh, June 4th. Over here, we're going to also be trying to cover, well, it ain't no trying. We, we will be covering unless illness or something like that prevents me from doing it. We will be covering um, Star Trek Discovery, uh, the, the final season here. Um, I think we we might have a little light discussions about uh, Doctor Who over here because we do have a friend of the show who does Doctor Who very well. And, you know, we're, I'm going to encourage people to follow Discussing Who, because if you want to talk Doctor Who, that is your corner of the world. But we will, you know, as far as reviewing episodes, just talking about how I feel. But for craft and theories and stuff, I don't think I'm going to be good enough in Doctor Who to do it. We're going to find out, though, huh? Um, so I'm saying all that to say this. It's so much stuff coming out. Y'all gonna have to let me know. What do you guys, I know, you know, no matter what, I'm doing intensive conversations around uh, Star Trek Discovery Season 5 for obvious reasons. It's the reason why I started, you know, one of the reasons why I started this stuff is to talk uh, Star Trek, to have the conversations about this nerd stuff that, um, you know, that's a little, that I might be a little quote, unquote, too old for in the real world. So I'm not going to run into uh, any other old ladies who want to sit down and have this type of conversation with me. So I have to come and find little friends on the internet. And you guys have, have truly saved my life, giving me somebody to talk to every week about this stuff. What? I didn't see this. When Grace says, now that I think of it, they confirm Storm is coming to what if. Maybe that's where she gets Storm's hammer. Hmm. Now that makes sense. I also heard the Prodigy news. I, I actually I posted a warning in the uh in the Discord. Like, please be careful. Now, if there is some if there's something new, correct me because the last thing I heard was that it had been um released in France and leaks were making their their way oh, uh, uh, over here. Um, if there's something else, let me know what that else is because I may have missed it. Uh, Justice says Godzilla and Kong this week got my tickets for opening night. 
Okay, that's another thing to keep your eyes open. That's another movie I want to see, but I can't get myself to get out of the house. You know how that is. No, most people don't, but some people do. If you y'all, if you understand what it's like to just sit in the house and can't leave, then I empathize with you because we are on a team this with you because I don't leave the house either. <laughs> um, but have fun, Justin. I hope you enjoy that movie. Justin says, I grew up with them also. When Grace, I'm 41, and they were part of my childhood and beyond. Yeah. Y'all were babies. Um, when Grace said, he's the only original ranger I never got to meet. Oh, that even makes it more sad. Outside of Trini, I was supposed to meet him at a con, a con the week someone tried to shoot him, and now I never will. Oh, so when Grace said, yeah, that was the news. I haven't been on Discord because I've been running errands all weekend. And everybody got a life, you know? So shoot, if I can help, <laughs> excuse me, if I can help put some information out there, I will. And if not, it's out there for, for everybody. So anybody can, can use it because we got the, uh, you know, we are all in and out like little revolving doors, but we keep up with what's going on, you know. Each uh, we keep each one of us posts something that that keeps the conversation going, and I appreciate that. Yeah, it's 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 not fun. It's not fun, but tis life. So yeah, what else? Anything else, y'all? Cause it's about time for dinner around these this joint. Oh, so you you met the Green Ranger, huh? That's so sad. <laughs> um, but yeah, we 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 got all these things, all this upcoming nerd content. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. Uh, I keep trying to ease back into putting out kind of short videos and it's just something you know I, I have the babies all day and I know I sound like I'm making freaking excuses and I am because something about this whole thing and getting in front of the camera to make videos is is something about it is like uh it's giving me anxiety for for no reason you know Oh, y'all, y'all making me sad about the people you were supposed to meet at these cons, and then they later passed. But yeah, we talked about uh the alkali acolyte coming, Star Trek Discovery coming, Doctor Who's coming, the boys is coming. Hmm. We got a very busy, put, put it like this, we got a very busy few months coming up and um, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to, which ones I'm going to talk about, which ones I'm going to be like, let I let somebody else do that. Uh, you know, I don't have to have an extensive conversation about this or that, even though I'm not adding uh, a whole awful lot to the, the, uh, the dialogue of like all the rest of the big channels, but you know, do you have a common conversation and chill out and no pressure, nobody in here fact checking like that? <laughs> oh gosh. When Grace is asking, "Am I watching Invincible?" Invincible after the first uh, the first four episodes of season two. It's like I forgot. I forgot it was coming back. And then when it came back, it was it was just like, okay, am I um am I excited to watch them or am I gonna just wait until I can just watch them all? Because because I just waited so long. <laughs> and and uh 
I think if it was more episodes than just like four, it makes sense to put that break in there, but it just doesn't make sense right now to me why they did that unless there is a, produ- a production aspect that I'm not, uh, that I'm overlooking. But I'm like, why, why, why the hell would y'all put that break there and just broke up my interest? It was crazy. Now, what you say? Um, hey, even Trek Culture for like three things wrong in one of their new videos, so we can all add things. Wait a minute. Oh, you say got okay. Now, usually I'm so much quicker than this. I'm sorry. You said even Trek culture got th- like three things wrongs in one of their new videos so we can all add the <laughs> yep intentional so okay so i don't have anything else on um x men we've talked about where we kind of part way we can, we're we're holding the brakes we're pulling back on the reins before we move into full yeah, this is where we're going with Storm Story uh, spoilers. And we're holding back the reins on whether we say what was really going on with Gene and uh, not Gene. Because one of them is Gene and one of them is not Gene. So <laughs> um, we talked about that. Um, the nostalgia factor. Everything. I love these first two episodes on, on my regular scale of one to five, I'm going to give this one a 4.999. And the only reason, <laughs> the only reason they didn't get in that perfect five is because, like I said, it was moving real freaking fast. And that is not their fault. It's my fault, but still, it's my rating. You was going so so freaking fast, and it was so much exposition. But in, I understand why the exposition was there. That's why I can't take off a whole point for it. It's just like a little teensy, winty, tiny part of a point because I'm like, that was some of that was uncomfortable, like that much of a point. But it was uncomfortable for like just that little bit of time. And now it's like, okay, I'm chill. We're back in the same spot, and hopefully next week we will uh, just slow down just a little bit, baby. Slow down. (laughs) Um, Justin said, I gave it 4.5. Lots of potential for this season. And Wig Ray said, ooh, I hope the the Mojo episode has cool 90s era fake commercials in it. Man, it's got to, huh? And then it's gonna have the a Nintendo 64. <laughs> we will see. It, it it has to have those kinds of commercials though, because that's when it's set. And you know Mojo gonna have some commercials in his stuff, and you know he is. <laughs> um, yeah, I ain't got nothing else, y'all. Shoot, I've had fun. I'm gonna go in here and, and grab a little supper supper and take a little nap so i'll see you guys next week peace